This guided practice tutorial supports you to create a jazz swing groove with a left hand walking bass line and right hand comping patterns. It's a good basis for playing jazz tunes in a solo piano style or to accompany other instrumentalists or vocalists or even just to understand how bass and harmony fit together in the jazz genre. The video is in three parts, looking at the left hand, the right hand and then hands together at the end with different comping rhythms. As you progress through the tutorial, if a step becomes too challenging, pause, practice in isolation before trying to play along with the video. Or you can target your practice to a particular idea while the video plays on. You'll still learn new things orally, even if you're practicing something different with your fingers. When you're comfortable with all the exercises, use this as a starting point to listen to the jazz greats explore, transcribe new bass lines, voicings and rhythms. However you decide to use this video, the rhythm will never stop so you can keep playing in the pocket and learn in the groove. Alright, here we go. Let's look at the swing groove subdivision. So we're feeling the beat as this. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three. We divide that beat in three, we get a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a And feeling swing quavers is all about hearing that uh, first and third beat of that subdivision. A one and a two and a three and a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. So that's like the basis of that swing groove subdivision. I'll just play it up the scale so you can hear it over different notes. Two, three, and one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. So we've got those triplets there, but we're just playing that first and third. So swing's kind of an approximation of that, uh, but that's probably the best way to sort of visualize it logically. So in the sheet music, you'll see quavers written normally. But when you write swing above, it means you're playing them like that. And notice I like to give a little accent on the off beats. I also like to think of the words duva. Duva, 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 duva. Reason for that is that va naturally has an accent to it. So, duva, 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 duva. And you can also have the full triplet when you get into soloing bass lines and comping. The triplet. Okay, so that's the swing groove. Now let's look at the key center for the chord progression we're going to look at. We're in B flat major. So we've got these notes here. All white notes except for these two black notes. And I'll come back down the scale. So that's the B flat major scale and we're going to build chords from that scale. So if we look at the 2 chord, we're going to play a 2, 5, 1, 6 progression, but all from notes from the scale. So if we were to build a 7th chord from the scale, we have 1, so all I'm doing is I'm skipping the notes to get that chord there, so that's C minor 7. And then here's our 5 chord, which is an F7, and a B flat major 7. And our 6 chord is G minor 7. So these are all chords that are built from the scale. Now we'll find out later on in the video, there's a really strong relationship between the dominant 7 on the 5 chord to the 1. And because we've got this 5-1 relationship, because we've got these, this tritone here, which really resolves nicely into the strong notes of a B flat. Now, because of that strong relationship to a dominant 7 chord, to the 1 chord, we're also going to make this 6 chord a dominant 7, because that leads really nicely into the C minor because it's five above the C minor you see. So that's the reason why we're going to change that to a G7. We're just going to naturalize that B flat. 
So here's the chord progression. Two, five, one, six. Like that. Which leads us nicely back into the two chord. Alright, and that's the chord progression we're going to work with. So now let's look at our left hand bass notes. So we're going to play the root notes on beats one and three of the bar. And it doesn't matter if it jumps around a little bit. The main thing is that we're getting the sense for the root notes on the strong beats there. So those root notes really ground the chord. And we want to keep our bass notes really low on the piano. Our harmony is kind of in this area, so we want our bass down nice and low on the keyboard. All right, now let's extend this. We're going to walk a two. So what I'm doing here is I'm using roots and fifths. And what I mean by the fifth is the fifth of the note I'm on. this it's just to show you they're all five apart now you don't have to go up all the time you can change direction and I actually find in jazz even this walking to pattern you can actually use in standards so even though it's a simplified version of our walking four pattern which we'll get to later you can actually use this when you're playing jazz tunes. Now let's look at adding ghost notes. So remember we've been one, a two, a three, a four, a 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 one. So you can see I'm adding some extra notes just to outline the rhythm, just to outline that swing rhythm. And that's called a ghost note. And it doesn't matter what pitch those ghost notes are on because it's all about just outlining that swing rhythm. You can see I'm getting a little bit bored of the roots and fifths and it's actually okay to play other notes as well. Just use your ears as a guide. This is just a framework to get you started. All right, let's extend this walking to exercise. We're gonna create a lead in to each of these notes. C to the fifth into F, C into B flat, F into G. Now remember, direction doesn't matter. I could keep going. I could come down, I could go down further, and coming up again. So the idea is that we're just always leading chromatically into the target note. Add our ghost notes in. So it doesn't matter what pitch those ghost notes are on, it's just about outlining that swing rhythm. Let's extend the exercise even further and walk on every crotch of beat of the bar. But to start this off, I'm going to play it in half time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, let's talk about the formula. I always start with the root go up the scale and then a leading note into the next chord and sometimes I don't need to do a chromatic leading note and I could go up or down differently I could go down from the C and in this case I'm just staying in the scale until I land on the F working my way up to B flat so the idea is to make sure you're landing the root on the strong beats. Okay, let's do it up to speed. Root, scale, scale, lead, root, scale, scale, lead, root, scale, scale, lead, root, scale, scale, lead, root, scale. Add 
that ghost notes in. And every now and then I like to give a little push on that two and four because that's where the hi-hats kind of closing and particularly if you don't have drums with you it kind of gives it a little bit of momentum one a two three a four a one a two three four one two three four now we can actually add triplets here so if i get to the top of the air i'm just adding a triplet before I start my way down. One, two, three, four. And the pattern I was using for that was root five root. Do that one more time. Okay, so get creative. Just use this as a guide. Main thing is getting that root on the first beat and see how you can link it all together. But what if you have two chords per bar in your chart? Well, then I just use my root leading root formula. I'll show you. So we go root lead 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 root. Oops. And you can see it doesn't really matter if I'm at approaching chromatically from above or below or even the tone above or below or doing some of those slips in that's kind of my formula for two per bar so i hope this is giving you some ideas of how you can construct a walking bass line and i encourage you to try it out in different jazz stanzas different keys but this is a good starting point, just practicing in a 2516 in B flat. All right, now let's look at chord voicings. So, the second part of the video starts now. And at this stage, I'll just keep my left hand kind of basic. I might start walking. I'll see what happens. I might change the sound so if you want to play along in your left hand, it's not going to clash as much. All right, let's look at the chords in root position first. So we've got our C minor 7 as we had before. F7, B flat major 7, G7. Notice it doesn't matter if I'm playing at high or low at this stage. The rule of thumb is we really want to keep that um, chord underneath the melody. So it will really depend where the melody is where you place these chords. Now what I'm showing you, I probably never actually play in performance, but it's good to understand from a theory point of view. Let's start taking some notes out of this chord progression. I'm going to start by taking out the fifth note. And you'll hear... We've got the same effect with the chords. So that's telling me the fifth doesn't really matter. The fifth doesn't affect the function of the chord. It's just a nice thick colour that we can add in. Now the other thing that's going on here is we've got the root taken care of in the uh, left hand. Let's strip the root out of the right hand. And now you can hear with two notes we've got the chord progression functioning. And this is a great basis to get down to build some nice, juicy, jazzy voicings. These are called shell voicings because they outline the essential notes of the chord. Now, I should mention at this stage, if you're reading some tricky uh, chord charts, with nines and thirteens and minor elevens, you can just break it down to the shell voicing because all those nines, thirteens and elevens are doing Oops, can't talk or play. Um, all those extensions are doing is just adding colour to the chord. So it's not changing the function of the chord. So if you find a chart too difficult, break it down to the thirds and sevenths, the shell voicings. But the problem with what I'm doing here is I'm jumping my hand position around. If I invert these shell voicings, 
they're going to work nice and smooth to each other. Watch this. I drop this one down. That becomes my seventh. That becomes my third. Drop that down and drop that down. So by moving the notes like this, we've got a smoother action. I'll just break that down a bit further. So that's our C minor seven. This is my F7, but now the 7th's on the bottom and the 3rd's on the top. This is my B flat major 7, 3rd on the bottom, 7th at the top. And then the G7, 7th on the bottom, 3rd on the top. It's a nice smooth way that these voicings can move together. And easier to play as well. And if you can get really familiar with these shells in these inversions, it's really easy to build the chords off them, the extended chords. We can also invert these shells and start on a different shape. I'll show you. If we start with the seventh at the bottom, now we drop to get our F7, drop the top to get our B flat, and lift the whole thing up to get our G7. So seventh at the bottom, third at the bottom, seventh at the bottom, third at the bottom. And when a voicing's got a third at the bottom, it's called an A voicing. When it's got a seventh at the bottom, it's called a B voicing. At this stage, I'll just remind you that the goal with these right hand voicings is to keep it under the melody. So we just want to keep these shells in this kind of mid-range of the piano. Not too low, not too high, just in the middle. All right, let's look at extending these shell voicings. So we've got options. We could use any notes from the B-flat major scale to extend. Let's just go back to this shape. If I wanted to, I could add a note in the middle or a note at the top. And I'm just picking notes from that B flat major scale. And you'll find some notes don't work as well, but use your ears to guide you and just experiment with notes from the chord. At this stage, I'll just say that if you see C minor sevens, F sevens on the chart, it's your choice as a jazz musician to extend those. So you might want to add nines, thirteens, elevens, um, and all sorts of different extensions to thicken up the chord. It's your decision, it's your choice to um, make these. The only thing I will just remind you is melody is the king. It means that if you're playing an extension, extended note that clashes with the melody, just pull it out. Okay, so that's that concept of extending the shells. Let's look at some set patterns that we um, use. So this is uh, built off the A voicings, and I'm just going to break it down for you. So we've got our C minor 9 chord. We drop this note down to get an F13 chord. Let's just go between these two. Go between them three times. Now let's look at the next shape. We bring the rest of the notes down to get our B flat major seven. So let's go between those chords. Two more times. One more time. And to get to our G9, we're going to jump our shape up like this. So we start there, keep those two notes, and go up like that. So let's just practice that transition one more time. And let's practice our transition back to C minor. So that note stays at the same. And this is how I like to practice my chord inversions. Just go between the actual changes and target that. 
Now let's look at the progression. Three, four. We're going to do the progression four times. But if you need to, stop the video and target the chord changes. And I'm just holding them down for now. We'll look at right hand rhythms later. Just holding them down so you can see the notes on the visualizer. And let's do it one more time. All right, now let's look at some other voicings, but we'll start from a different position. So we're going to start with a seventh, a ninth, a third, and the fifth. And in this version, we only drop this one note down to get to our F13. Two more times. Okay, and now to get to our, our B flat major seven, we just drop these three notes down from the F13. Let's target two more times. One more time. And then for our G9, we're going to play this sort of voicing here like that. So from B flat major 9 to G9. B flat major 9. If you don't know the numbers of the extent of the chords yet, don't stress too much. Just get to know the shapes and you'll learn those numbers later when you when you're ready. Alright, and let's bring our progression back to that C minor. So you can see from here, we drop this down, we drop those down, and drop that one down. Sorry, I'm trying to play in the groove, but it's getting away from me. Alright, now let's do the progression. Drop one note down, drop the rest down, and Slip up, and drop these three notes down. Let's do it four times. So some great voicings to get under your fingers. And you'll find they're going to feel similar in different keys, just a different arrangement of the black notes. But the hand grip kind of feels quite similar. So get to know them and it'll be easier to transfer to other keys. All right, so that's um, two sets of voicings that we can use. Now let's make the five chord a little bit juicier by altering them. So let's explain why we alter dominant seven chords. Remember how I said we get a really strong relationship between that five seven and the one, the five chord and the one chord. If we add some chromatic alteration it causes tension and release so it already had tension that wants to resolve but if we add these chromatic extensions it gets a tenser sound so all sorts of ways we can um, alter a dominant chord so let's look at these now so we can have our shell voicing might play it down here nice juicy uh, register here and we've got our five well we can flatten that five and get a tense sound see they've got a f7 flat five we can also sharpen the five lovely sound that one and see how it's always creating that tension release now we've got our nine here we can flatten that nine resolves nicely and we can also sharpen that nine so they're our um, chromatic extended tones flat five sharp five flat nine sharp five sharp nine whoops <laughs> and we can um, add them in together so we could have a sharp Five, sharp nine, sharp nine, flat five. We could have a flat nine, sharp five. We could have a flat nine, sharp, flat five. Yeah, you get the idea. 
And sometimes if we just want to give the jazz musician the choice, we'll just write F7 altered, which just means make it as tense as possible. So in these examples, we will use our original voicings, but look at different ways we can alter them. And we'll also alter the sixth chord. So with this first one, we're doing flat nine and a flat 13 or a sharp five, however you want to look at it. So, so those three notes come down. Let's just target that. Two more times. Just drop those three. Getting a nice F7 altered sound. And now to get to B flat, we just slip down these three notes here and leave this note in the middle. One more time. And now let's jump up to our G7 altered. So we've got this kind of third and seventh with these black notes um, in between them. So we've got B flat major seven, G7 altered. G7 flat nine, sharp five. Let's do it two more times. One more time. And now let's take this shape back, which bring that down, that down. So remember, this is how I like to practice my chord inversions. Get really familiar with that transition. It'll be much easier to play the progression. All right, on this one, we're gonna launch into our progression. Here we go, and ah. Uh, Tension and release, hey? Two more times. We're getting a bit creative with my left hand bass line as well. And don't worry about doing hands together if you're struggling with that. Awesome! That was great! Now we're going to look at one more version of chords before we get into our last exercise. And we're going to start with our different inversion here and work on getting to our closest altered sound from here. So if we start on that C minor 9 like we had before, we drop this one down, drop this one down and bring this one up, leave that one there. And we get an F7 sharp 5, sharp 9. Great sound. C minor, 9, F7, altered. Two more times. And from this shape, we're going to build to our B flat major 7, just by bringing these three notes down here. So the bottom note stays the same, three notes come down. Two more times. Of course, repeat it back and forth as much as you need to. Just for sake of time, I'm just doing it about three or four times. Now let's look at the next shape. We bring this up, bring that up, bring that up, bring that up to get our G7, sharp five, sharp nine. So from B flat major seven, nine, sorry. That's probably the, the jumpiest one we've had. So you've got to really visualize the shape before you hit it. And now let's go from this shape back to our C minor nine. So you can see these notes are pretty close, but this one has to jump down, down to there. All right, let's practice the progression. Then we can get into some two-handed rhythms. Here we go. Whoops, sharp five. That's 
literally doesn't matter. But for the sake of the exercise, I'm trying to keep it consistent for you. But if you find yourself doing slightly different voicings, that's okay. You'll get it eventually, and they'll probably still sound fine anyway. It's good to have some discipline while you're practicing new shapes, just to make sure you've really locked them in. Yeah, awesome. All right, now we're gonna look at a whole bunch of uh, rhythms that are hands together. And I haven't decided what to do here. I think I'll do um, just shell voicings for now. That means you can practice any of the combinations along with me, uh, any of those four voicings that we looked at, and they shouldn't clash because I'm just keeping it to shells. Now in the graphic, I'm gonna show you where you play hands together at the top line. So you'll see T for together, L for left, R for right. We're gonna go through some really familiar jazz rhythms in jazz pieces. Now, if you find this too tricky, just pause the video and practice in isolation. Uh, practice where the left hand and right hand land. But I'm going to play them all in rhythm so you could play along or you could listen and get the idea. So let's look at the Freddie Green. We're just playing our voicings with the bass line. But still feeling that ghost note. That slight push on two and four. I'm going to do each rhythm four times. And don't worry if your bass line's doing something different to mine, as long as you've got that same vibe. Okay, let's look at the Nina Simone. That's where we do the right hand on the off beats. famous in My Baby Just Cares For Me. All the right hand chords are short on the offbeat. Keep it straight. Now, Killer Joe. Ba 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 ba. So listen to the tune. Killer Joe has this strong rhythm pattern in it. Ba ba ba. Two more. I'll try not to be too tricky this time. Otherwise, I'll lose it. like a reverse of that, the so what. Same rhythm, but notice what I'm doing on the last beat. I'm doing the change on the last beat. That's called anticipating the beat. So I'm changing my voicing on that last hit. And if you listen to the tune so what, that's the rhythm. Let's take that same idea and just add one more note in there. Two, three, and four. Ba, 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 ba. I'm still changing the chord on that last hit. Still anticipating that chord. Sing it. Okay, now let's look at short long. Oh, what have I got here? Let's do it again. One, a two, a oh, one, a two, three, four, one, a two, three. Oh, 
all one. At three, four, one. At three, four, all one. At three, four. Two more times through the progression. Got a duva and duva, bap, duva, bap, duva, bap, the duva, bap, bap, duva, bap, duva, bap, duva. I've got to change the page. Can I do it? Oh yeah! And hiccup. Da -da. So this one we're feeling the first two notes of the triplet. Da -da -da -da. Oh one and a two out. Oh one and a two and. Oh one and a two and. Oh one and two and. Let's do two more of those. it a hiccup. Couldn't think of any other name for it. Hiccup. And nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. So in this example we're playing three over two. This one gets a little bit tricky. Together, right, left, right. Together, right, left, right. And I'm fi saying the words, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. And that gives us our rhythm. And when you're really comfortable with that, try skipping that first note. through all of those exercises you are a legend and you are committed to music and you will do fine things in the jazz world so aim for effortless mastery so you can build up these shapes and rhythms into your muscle memories apply it to other jazz standards and other keys remember if you find a chord that is looks too hard you can break it down to those shell voicings and build it from there I've got a whole series of 251 exercises to practice voicings in different keys. Look in the description for details of this and other resources that might help you. I hope you have a great jazz journey and you listen to a lot of great jazz artists and you get inspired by walking bass lines, chord voicings that make you hungry to practice more. So thanks for playing along with me today. And I'll see you in the next video.